us now on the Sunrise Morning Show is Richard Gazelle. He is the new executive director of In Defense of Christians. Good morning, Rich. Good morning, Annie. How are you? I am doing great, and congratulations on the new gig. Thank you so much. It's a great honor. It is awesome that uh, you'll be taking on this full-time role with In Defense of Christians and the important work that you all do over at IDC. Now, we're going to be talking about uh, the recent report from the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. They just recently released their annual report. And, and just as an overview, Rich, what is the point of this report each year? Absolutely, Annie. Um, we'll just give a little background to your listeners. The United States Commission on International Religious Freedom, also called USERF, is an independent bipartisan government uh, commission charged with making recommendations to the President, Congress, and to the State Department on matters of international religious freedom. And each year, as you mentioned, they release a report with these recommendations. Uh, so we had the opportunity to look at this report um, and uh, kind of assess the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, mostly good, uh, but there were a couple things that kind of caught our attention that could have been a little better. Well, what were those? Well, for example, um, one of the positive, let's start with the, start with the high points. One of the positive uh, areas was uh, Iran. Uh, this year, as in past years, they were given a recommendation for country of particular concern uh, status. We really think they hit the nail on the head with this one. Uh, the report notes that scores of Christians and other minorities continue to be unjustly arrested, uh, assaulted, harassed, and uh, imprisoned for their faith. In this year's report, it actually goes a little further. What particularly caught our attention is uh, this year they actually – uh, noted that Iran continues to export religious extremism abroad, so not just oppressing Christians at home, but also internationally. Uh, and when Yusuf reports re- refer to Iran's proxy militias, uh, they're referring mainly to Hezbollah in Iraq, excuse me, in, in Lebanon, and the popular mobilization forces in Iraq. And as you're probably well aware by now, Annie, um, Hezbollah is essentially threatening the total collapse of Lebanon which is the last free bastion of Christianity in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. So this, this really caught our attention, and we are pleased that they are giving attention to the fact that Iran is spreading its tentacles externally, not just domestically. And also of particular concern is um, Syria as well. I know you wanted to talk about Syria. That's right. Uh, so the Yusuf Report uh, does recommend Syria for a country of particular concern status. Uh, they correctly report uh, that uh, religious freedom remains under serious threat in Syria on multiple fronts. For one thing, the Turkish-backed militias and jihadist groups threaten the religious uh, minorities in northern Syria, particularly Christians, all while at the same time Turkey itself continues its campaign to expand into Syria through aerial bombing and ground campaigns, which has had devastating effects on the ancient Christians uh, in northern Syria. Meanwhile, of course, the regime-controlled areas uh, the Syrian government continues violent crackdowns against human rights uh, activists, and you know it, it's really a terrible thing to witness. Yeah. But on the flip side, um, in the report it does note that the autonomous administration in northeast Syria remains the only region with a strong record of religious freedom and ethnic pluralism, which, mm-hmm. as previously mentioned, is under threat by both the Syrian regime in, in the south and Turkey in the north. Now, you've mentioned Turkey a few times, and Turkey was recommended for the State Department's special watch list. And I want to talk about Turkey specifically in a moment, but could you first give us the difference? Um, What is the difference between countries of particular concern and countries on the special watch list? Like, you know, assuming that the State Department takes these recommendations, does it make a difference in, in diplomatic relations or anything like that? Certainly, yeah. The the differences are real, and they are actionable and tangible differences. So country of particular concern recommendation essentially is a signal to the State Department that USERF regards these particular nations as egregious violators of religious freedom. It's then incumbent on the State Department to act on that recommendation and uh, place them on their their particular concern uh, list, which would then potentially – depending on the action of the State Department, trigger sanctions on these, on these particular countries. Now, the special watch list, on the other hand, is basically just a list that says, hey, we're watching these countries for further indications uh, should they devolve or regress in terms of their treatment of uh, religious minorities. 
So there are differences. But at the end of the day, it comes down to whether or not the State Department acts on these recommendations and, uh, and initiates sanctions on, on these particular countries. Right. Well, given that you've mentioned Turkey numerous times just in the past few minutes that we've been talking, and given how often Turkey has been the topic of conversation with you and your colleagues at In Defense of Christians, I imagine you're disappointed to see Turkey uh, just on the special watch list and not a country of particular concern. Uh, that's absolutely correct, Annie. Uh, unfortunately, Turkey happens to be the, uh, the biggest source of disappointment, in fact, uh, in this year's report. Um, you know, as you said, they weren't uh, recommended for a country of particular concern, which uh, really uh, goes against our better uh, judgment, I think. Um, the fact is, Turkey continues to persecute Christians, both domestically and internationally. Uh, domestically, they've weaponized the Turkish legal system to throw Christian clergy in prison merely for practicing their faith. Um, you know, I think we've spoken before about the case of Father Aho in southeast Turkey, who was essentially um, tried for um, charges of terrorism for giving bread and water to uh, visitors of his monastery. He's in a secluded monastery. He had hungry visitors come to his door. A year and a half later, the Turkish authorities told him these people were, were you know, questionable characters, therefore you are now culpable for supporting terrorism. He just was convicted uh, this past month and given two years in prison for that, all for just being a good Samaritan to, to hungry passers-by. Um, so, again, weaponizing the, uh, the legal system against Christians while also effectively erasing any trace of Anatolia's Christian history and identity by converting many iconic churches, historic churches, including the Hagia Sophia last summer. Um, and as pre previously discussed, Annie, they also continue to destroy the ancient Christian communities of Syria, Iraq, Armenia, Cyprus, Lebanon, and unfortunately the list goes on. Yeah. We've been talking to Richard Gazelle from In Defense of Christians. Go to indefenseofchristians.org, and there you can find a link to their roundtable discussion with the press on this International Religious Freedom Report. And you can find IDC linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Rich, thank you so much. Great to be with you, Annie. Have a great day. You too.